Hi, you're welcome. A strong quality, it is important that you daily think of how you can improve your teaching. And one of the ways you can improve your teaching is by listening to your students. After you have taught for a long while, it could be after a topic or at the end of a week, it's important that you take out time to also listen to your students. And one way to listen to your students is by using the feedback activity on Moodle platform. Today, I would like to show us how this feedback activity works and how you can engage it with your students to get their own opinion of what your class has been, your teaching has been. I'd like to welcome you to this short session of how to use the feedback activity on the Moodle platform. Welcome. How do you begin to create your feedback activity on the Moodle platform? I'm just going to demonstrate that by clicking on Turn Editing On. After you've turned Editing On, you scroll down to the week or the topic you want to add this feedback activity. I've decided that I'll add it on topic one. And then you click on Add an Activity or Resource. And then you go under the activities, you select act Feedback. And click on add give this feedback a name let's call it topic one feedback you can choose to add a description and then display this description for the students to see the availability allows you to set a date from when you want to start receiving the answers you may choose to just enable the time and then set the time as it pleases you. Now, question and submission setting. Remember that you can always expand all the settings from the top there. And then question and submission settings, if you choose that you want the answers to be anonymous, you can decide to leave it as anonymous, or you can decide to log the names of the students. And of course, if you choose anonymous, if you still go back to your log, on your course, you will still see the persons that actually filled this um, the form, but that will take um, a longer period. So you can decide to just select, take the second option, which says user's, user's name will be logged and shown with answers. Allow multiple submission. If you allow, if you say yes, the students will be able to submit more than once. You can always use this with the anonymous option. Now, enable notification of submission. When they submit, you get notified. Auto number questions. I like to use this and then show analysis page. I'll leave that as no. And then a feedback to the students once they submit their feedback. Let's move forward. Then link to the link to next activity. After the students submitted, the URL will appear and then it will link them straight to that activity. Once they click on it, activity completion, we say that we always like to select that when conditions are met. And then we save this and display. Now, moment you save and display, you are, you can edit questions. If you select edit questions, you can add these various types of questions. The first thing that we want to quickly do is to edit the question. And then if you want to edit it, you can decide to start by putting a label. Um, topic one, and then we have this label. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is to add a multi-choice question. Now, I would like to make it required so that it will be compulsory for the students. So we can start to add our questions. And then I'll put a label as a student. And then I want them to, I want it to be a multi-choice drop-down answers. The moment I selected that, you notice that all these other vertical hide not selected option disappeared. You can always try that. Of course, the position is two. And then we're good here. Now we're done creating our questions. And as you can see, we have seven questions already. 
Now let's quickly look at what we have done. Oh, in the overview section, it has already showed us that we have seven questions and we don't have any responses yet. And then the next thing that we also see is that um, under the template section, like I so told us the other time, we can see some of the things. We can save this as a template and then we can also see responses, but we don't have a response yet. But under show non respondent, you can see that the list of your students are all there and they have not yet started responding. Of course, you can send them messages to show that uh, you're expecting their responses. Now, now I'm going to quickly um, respond as a student, and then you can see some of the new things that we're going to see in a moment. Now, three students have responded, and the moment that happened, we saw that submitted answers became three, and then we can quickly go and check show non-respondent. It was previously 41 students. Now it's now 38. And I can go to show responses. On that show responses, I can see what the students have filled. All their responses. And then it is also possible to just go ahead and download the res these responses. Um, you can check it. And then you can also see the analysis of these responses, which you can also view based on the answers. And once you're satisfied with this, it's also possible to export to Excel. You can also export to Excel. Dependent questions. How do you add dependent questions to your feedback activity? What you do is you add a question. You can choose to make it required. So we add this question. And then we we'll give it a label. We're going to give this coverage. And then we put in the choices, the options. The moment you put in the options, you save the question. And once the question is saved, you add a page break. Once you add the page break, then we can add a question based on that option. Now, once the question is set, we're going to select the label for that question, which is coverage. And then the moment you select the label coverage, we're going to put the option that we want to, want this question to be dependent on, which is good. So once the student selects good, he'll be directed to this next question. Now, if the student has selected poor, and you can see immediately it's, shows that this question is dependent on this label called coverage and the option good. Now let's add the next short answer. Okay. Now we select the coverage again and then we type poor. Then we we'll save. Now this allows the student, the moment the student selects good, he's directed to this question. Can you make a comment on why you selected good? And if he selects poor, he's directed to this question. Can you explain why the coverage was poor in your own opinion? That's basically how you add questions that will depend on the on an option the student has selected previously.
Thank you very much for attending this session. I would like you to please kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell and invite your friends to watch this video. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.